Like the credit roll at the end of a movie, the Works Cited list gives credit to all the books, articles, films, tapes, and interviews used in putting together your paper. And, like the credit roll, it comes at the end. As the research writer, citations are your way to acknowledge the wide variety of sources used in compiling your research. It is important to credit these sources for several reasons. First of all, it gives the reader some insight into the extent of your research on the subject. It allows others to evaluate whether you've drawn your conclusions from reading just one or two pieces of information, or if you've drawn from a more complete variety of sources. It allows your readers to place your work within a wider context of information on your subject. Secondly, citations give your readers information on where to locate the source materials. Your readers may want to read more on the subject, or they may want to read the specific article you cited to see if they agree with your interpretation. Whatever the reason, you need to give enough information so they can go to the library and find that source themselves. And finally, by crediting your sources, you're recognizing the ideas and research of others who've helped you formulate the direction of your own paper. You also are acknowledging that much of the information contained in the paper is not entirely your own. And by doing this, you can avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism, you'll remember, is the use of other people's words and ideas as if they were your own. So by crediting the person who wrote those thoughts, you're not implying that you are the originator of those ideas. How do you know when it's necessary to document a statement or idea? Generally, if it isn't your own, document it. If it's a direct quote or an idea of someone else's expressed in your own words, you must cite the source. You also need to document any fact or statistic that is not widely known or accepted. If you are referring to the same work in several sentences or paragraphs, you do not need to keep mentioning the author's name. Once is enough. However, if you haven't referred to that author's work for some time, and you've cited other sources in between, you need to cite it when it is referenced again. Writers must be meticulous about providing documentation in a precise format. While there are several forms or styles for documentation, two styles are predominantly used in colleges, the MLA and the APA formats. The MLA style is the form endorsed by the Modern Language Association. APA is the style adopted by the American Psychological Association. Because MLA is the form preferred in most English classes, it is the style that this course will use and explain most closely. In 1988, MLA released its newest revised format for documentation. This new format has by now been widely adopted by professors of English, humanities, and languages. The cornerstone of this system of documentation is the work cited list. Traditionally, the term bibliography was used for the list of reference books and articles used in writing a paper. But today we have a far greater variety of resource materials at our disposal. From radio and TV programs, to films, videotapes, and audio cassettes, to compact discs and phonograph records, to name a few. The term work cited, because of its broader meaning, has replaced the word bibliography. The Works Cited list gives a complete and detailed accounting of all sources used in a paper. It is the only place in the paper where all the information about your sources can be found. Only in the Works Cited list can a reader obtain information as specific as the complete name of the author, the complete title of the work, the date of publication, place of publication, and the publisher. Please note that the Works Cited page does not list any sources which were not used in your final draft. Even though other sources may have been part of your initial bibliography, don't include them if they are found to be irrelevant and subsequently not used. Only those references used and cited should be listed. 
Consult your handbook as you write each entry in your list. Do not trust your memory for the exact format for citations. Each type of source has a slightly different format. As you look at the sample entries in your handbook, you'll notice they have been grouped into categories. There are specific guidelines for citing books, articles, films, and other audiovisuals. Each type of source requires different kinds of information. You can't treat a listing for a book the same way you do a videotape, for example, because videotapes don't have page numbers or publishers, and sometimes are without a specific author. Let's look at the most basic entry, the citation for a book with one author. Let's suppose that in your paper, you used material from Toffler's Future Shock. To write the work cited entry for this book, you first have to put the information in the prescribed order. As you look at the sample in your handbook, you will note that the author's name is always listed with the last name first. So you list Toffler this way. Toffler, comma, Alvin. Notice also that the first word of the entry, Toffler, begins flush with the left margin. Although you are accustomed to indenting the beginning of a paragraph, you do not do so in the works cited. In fact, you will write your entry in the complete opposite manner from the format of a paragraph. Begin every entry at the left-hand margin. Indent all subsequent lines of that entry five spaces. This is called hanging indentation. Hanging indentation is used in listing sources because it draws attention to the first word of the entry, and it is the first word that is the most critical in helping the reader identify or locate a source. Notice also that after the author's name, there is a period. This rule of punctuation does not vary throughout the entire list. Every author's entry ends with a period. The next item is the title of the work, which is underlined. Remember that you will need the complete title. If there is a subtitle, that is included too, and is indicated as such by a colon. As with the author, the title of the work is also followed by a period. Next comes the publication information. First, the name of the city in which the book was published, in this case, New York, followed by a colon. If more than one city is listed, use the city named first. Then comes the name of the publishing company. This book was published by Random House. When identifying the name of the publishing company, the new MLA format directs that the publisher's name be shortened as much as possible while remaining clearly identifiable. So in this entry, you write merely random followed by a comma. The same holds true for other publishing houses you might list. St. Martin's Press can be shortened to St. Martin's. Holt, Reinhardt, and Winston to Holt. And Houghton Mifflin to simply Houghton. The final entry after the publisher's name is the date of publication. Because it is the last item in the entry, it is followed by a period. This book was published in 1970. So your completed entry now looks like this. Another common type of citation is the one that's written for a magazine or journal article. Here's a citation for a typical magazine. Note that some magazine and newspaper articles do not identify the author. In this case, the citation begins with the title of the article. When there is an identified author, list the author first, as you do with a book. The title of the article becomes the second entry. Notice that when you begin with the title, it still starts flush with the left margin. Notice also that the title of the article is enclosed with quotation marks. This is different from a book which is underlined. The title of an article is followed by a period, and the period is inside the quotation marks. Next comes the title of the magazine or journal, underlined. There is no punctuation mark after the name of the magazine, just a space and the date. In the MLA style, the day, in this case the 14th, precedes the month, May, and the year, 1988. The date is followed by a colon. The final number in this listing represents the page on which the article appears. In this case, the article is only one page. If it were longer, 
the inclusive pages would be listed. Once again, a period marks the end of the entry. These two models illustrate the essential principles of works cited entries according to the MLA style. After you've written an entry for each source used in your paper, you will need to alphabetize your list. To do this, remember that articles such as A, and, and the are ignored. For example, to alphabetize an entry starting with the title, The Propaganda Machine, disregard the word the and use the P in propaganda as your first letter for alphabetizing. This entry would then come before an entry starting with the title, Senators in the Mainstream. Remember that for each entry you write, you need to consult the appropriate model provided in your handbook, and you need to follow that model precisely. This is not the part of your paper to show your creativity by inventing a new format. The work cited section must follow the prescribed format. Once you have a complete and precise listing of each source for your work cited page, you do not have to duplicate this information in the actual text of your paper. However, you do need to acknowledge a source whenever you make a statement which is not your own. According to the MLA style sheet, you're required to provide only enough information to direct the reader to the proper item in the works cited section. In the old MLA format, this was referred to as a footnote. And like the name implies, footnotes were found at the bottom of the page. In the new MLA format, however, the citation is found within the text following the sentence it is referencing. The current format for this type of citation is to write only the author's last name and the page number, both in parentheses, followed by a period. For example, once all of the available lifeboats had been dispatched from the sinking Titanic, those doomed to remain on and go down with the ship experienced an uncanny sense of calm. Lord 109. As you can see, this form of citation is simple and straightforward. Notice that there is only the author's last name and the number of the page. No comma and no abbreviation for page, just the page number. Also note that the parenthetical reference occurs after the quotation marks, but before the final punctuation mark. Lord 109 tells the reader that the information preceding the citation was drawn from page 109 of a book authored by Lord. I'm just reading this paper here and I want to look up these references. Um, where can I do that? Okay. Uh... If readers want to obtain more information about this source, they need only consult the works cited, where the complete entry will be found. For example, If, however, you have more than one book or article authored by the same person, you will need to list a third piece of information in your text citation. A shortened version of the title so that the reader can tell which book is being cited. For example, Walter Lord also wrote The Night Lives On, another book about the Titanic. In this case, a citation which reads Lord 127 may confuse the reader because it's unclear which of Lord's two books is being referenced. We therefore add more information. The proper citation in this instance becomes Lord, A Night 2, 201. Now there is no confusion as to which of Lord's books is being credited. A similar problem is created when you have two different authors with the same last name. For example, you may be using Susan Cheever's book, Home Before Dark, as well as John Cheever's The Wapshot Chronicle. In this instance, you list the author's full name in the text citation. Susan Cheever, 101. Any other situation which might arise involves a source with no identifiable author. Remember that the source without an author is listed in the work cited by title. The citation inside your essay should refer to the first word or words of the title, rather than the author. Say, for example, you're citing the article, Bone Booster, which appeared in Time magazine. This is the correct way to cite this article in the context of your paper. Bone 54. 
By using the first word of the entry, bone, the writer clearly directs the reader to the proper item in the list of works cited. Another situation you will probably run into is the use of the long quote. When a quotation runs longer than four lines in your typed paper, set it apart from your text by beginning a new line. Although a colon usually introduces this type of quotation, the context may require a different form of punctuation. Do not use quotation marks. The quotation needs to be indented 10 spaces from the left margin and double spaced. The citation appears at the end of the quoted passage and follows the same rules as those for shorter quotes. You may run into other unusual situations as you compose your citations. If in doubt, refer to your style handbook for clarification. An even simpler way to credit a source within your essay is to use the author's name in the sentence. For example, according to Lord, the Titanic was the last ocean liner ever to sail with too few lifeboats, 127. Because the author, Lord, is already identified in the sentence itself, there is no need to repeat the name within the parentheses. Note that you need list only the page number in parentheses after the sentence. With this option, you must be careful that you use the first word as it appears in the work cited entry. Another popular form of documentation is the APA style, originated by the American Psychological Association. This style shares many elements with the MLA format. However, some differences must be noted. These two formats are not interchangeable. When you're assigned a paper to write, always be sure you know which format you are required to use because you cannot use a little of one and a little of the other. Let's look at a typical entry in the list of references written according to APA specifications. Here you notice several differences from the MLA format. In the APA style, the date of publication is placed in parentheses and is listed immediately after the author's name. It is the second entry rather than the last. Notice also that while the author's last name is provided, only the initial of the first name is given. Finally, notice that only the first word of the title is capitalized in the APA style, whereas Every word is capitalized in the title with MLA. It's important to note that if the city is a major one, one that is readily known to the average reader, you do not need to list the name of the state. Cities like New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago, for example, can stand alone. If the city is not widely recognized, such as Inglewood Cliffs, you must include the abbreviation for the state, which is New Jersey in this case. There are similar differences in the parenthetical citations found within the text of the paper. APA citations basically have three elements. The author's last name, the date of publication, and the page number of the reference. This example illustrates the APA style. Notice the publication date comes between the author's name and page number. And page or pages is abbreviated rather than just the number appearing in the citation. Notice, too, that the title is never used in an APA citation. Even though you may use more than one work written by an author, you do not list the title. It is assumed that the publication date of the work will help the reader distinguish between the works cited. If you choose to credit your author by citing his or her name in your text, the APA style differs again from the MLA style. For example, according to Lord, 1976, the Titanic was the last ocean liner ever to sail with too few lifeboats, page 127. Notice that in the APA style, the publication date follows immediately after the author's name in the sentence. Only the page number comes at the end of the cited passage. Again, the best source for pinpointing these specific differences is your handbook. Always refer to it when writing any documentation for your research paper. Although the MLA and APA styles are widely used by many colleges, they are by no means the only formats available for use in the documentation of research papers. 
Each department of a college or university may endorse one particular style over another. Here's a list of just some of the other style manuals which can be found in just about any library. Notice that there are different manuals for just about every discipline taught. Just as the content of a research paper in the area of business will be different from that in math, the citations for the sources will differ also. Check with your instructor to see which is the preferred style for your assigned paper. Documenting your research paper is an exacting and time-consuming process, and it may not be your favorite part about writing a paper. But once it is finished, you will have managed to demonstrate that you can take a variety of materials and ideas and shape them into a body of work uniquely your own. And that is an achievement in itself. Now let's apply some of the skills you've just learned by looking at a few samples. Is the student version following each original excerpt an example of correct scholarship or an example of plagiarism? Original. American presidents are not mere victims buffeted by the circumstances of their histories and experiences. They are active agents in the midst of life, coping and resilient. I see them not as segmented characters, but as whole men capable of growth. Student version. In order to understand American presidents, one must see them as active agents in the midst of life and not as segmented characters buffeted by circumstance. This statement has been plagiarized. Although the order of the wording has been changed and the source is correctly identified, word-for-word -word phrases have been used without quotation marks. Original. Back in 1954, Mercedes took a hugely successful racing car, the 300 SL, and with minor changes turned it into a sports car for sale to the public. It caused a sensation. For one thing, it looked like no other car on the road. The doors were hinged at the top so that when they were open, it resembled a bird in flight. Student version. Esquire magazine notes that Mercedes redesigned its 1954 300 SL racing machine into a sensational road car that had doors hinged at the top rather than the sides. This statement has been plagiarized. The documentation is incomplete in the student version. Author and page number are not included. Original. Opening a franchise from scratch isn't the only option for those interested in going into business for themselves. Often existing franchises are on sale, and currently resales are responsible for nearly 50% of the activity of business brokerage services. Changing hands most are franchises in fast food, auto markets, quick printing, and video rental shops. The average ownership of a franchise is 4.8 years. Student version. Carol Steinberg reports that franchises change hands on average every five years. Changing hands most are franchises in fast food, auto markets, quick printing, and video rental shops, says Steinberg. This statement has been plagiarized. The documentation is correct, but exact wording has been used in the student version without quotation marks. Original. During the 1950s, anti-communism implied more than opposition to a particular regime or even a political philosophy. It suggested a comprehensive counter-ideology of its own, a system of total politics, one consumed by what it opposes and which therefore constructs a political universe in terms that derive almost exclusively from the felt imperatives of the conflict with the enemy. Student version. Anti-communism of the 1950s was a comprehensive counter-ideology of its own that developed as a result of the felt imperatives of the conflict with the enemy. This has been correctly documented. Quotation marks have been placed around phrases used verbatim. 
Original. For Southern Baptists, the relevant doctrines are the primacy of the individual conscience, the autonomy of the local church, and the concept of the preaching ministry as a direct calling from God, the ability of women to respond to the call to the ministry, and the power of local churches to ordain them are squarely within the Baptist tradition. Student version. According to Ellen Rosenberg, Southern Baptist women are allowed to join the ministry. The fact that local churches can ordain them places the church squarely within the Baptist tradition. This statement has been plagiarized. The documentation is correct, but the last phrase is taken verbatim without quotation marks. Original. When 15,000 anxious Americans were evacuated from Clark Air Base in the Philippines last week, they didn't know what to think. Were they in real danger or the victims of a false alarm? Within 48 hours, they got their answer. Nearby Mount Pinatubo, after sleeping quietly for more than 600 years, suddenly erupted in a series of explosions that shot plumes of steam and ash as much as 30 kilometers, 20 miles, into the sky. Student version. Researchers are getting better at predicting volcanic eruptions. Recently, 15,000 anxious Americans were evacuated from Clark Air Base in time to save their lives. This documentation is correct. Quotation marks are used appropriately, and the author and page numbers are noted.